All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started with these Newton's second law notes. Let's take a look at a box and a person that is applying a force to that box. And let's try to figure out what relationship there is between force, mass, and acceleration. So here's my box. My box has a mass of 50 kilograms. And here's my person, and I'm going to have them apply a force of 50 newtons. I see that a force of 50 newtons results in an acceleration of 1 meter per second squared. As I increase that force, I can see that acceleration is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Now let's take a look at what happens if I have this person pushing a box at a constant force of 100 newtons, but now I double the mass that they're pushing. So instead of one box, it's now two boxes. I notice that my acceleration goes from 2 meters per second squared to 1 meter per second squared. And then if I keep adding mass to that, I notice that acceleration gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So let's talk about what we saw on our simulation. And let's think about what relationship was there between mass and acceleration. Well, I noticed that when I increased the mass of that object, so when I had two boxes instead of one, then my acceleration went down. Therefore, we would say that as mass increases, acceleration decreases. And just like we mentioned before, as you are increasing the mass on top of that other box, the box is going to be going slower. Why does this make sense? Well, this makes sense because heavier things are harder to move than lighter things. I mean, think about if you've ever had to move anything before. Say you got a big package for your birthday or for Christmas or something, and you tried bringing it in the house, but it's like a giant weight set. Well, it's going to be very difficult to move. But maybe instead of getting that, you just got an envelope full of cash that'd be a lot easier to move because that's a lot lighter than a big, heavy weight set. Now let's look at what the relationship is between force and acceleration. Well, we should have noticed also on the simulation that force and acceleration are related in a way that when force increases, acceleration is going to increase. Why does this one make sense? Well, this makes sense because the harder you push something, the faster it's going to move. Let's imagine if I had a soccer ball and I had a baby kick a soccer ball. Well, that baby doesn't have much force, so that soccer ball is not going to move that fast. But now let's say I kick that soccer ball. And because I used to be amazing at soccer, of course I'm going to kick that soccer ball with more force. And of course that soccer ball is going to go super far and super fast. So again, it's just common sense here. The harder you push something, meaning the more force you put into it, the faster that object's going to move. Let's do a quick little review of mass and weight before we look at our next section. So just a reminder, mass is the amount of matter an object contains. Weight is the measure of the pull of gravity on that object. Therefore, mass will not change when our location changes. So mass is always the same because we always have the same amount of matter. Weight, on the other hand, will change. Weight will change depending on where you're at. So if you're on Earth or you're on the moon, it will change. And again, weight is just referring to the force of gravity that we feel due to the object that we are on. So here's a little picture demonstrating that, showing how our mass is the same at all four of these locations, but how our weight changes. On the Earth, we experience a weight of 623 newtons. On the moon, we experience a weight of 103 newtons. And then Jupiter and the sun, so on and so forth. Because we are experiencing less weight on the moon, it allows those astronauts to jump up super high. Because instead of them having to jump and apply a force to 140 pounds, they're only having to apply a force to 23 pounds. But if they were on Jupiter, well, those astronauts would feel two times as heavy as they are on Earth. And if they were on the sun, other than the fact that they would probably be burned alive, they would feel 20 times heavier than they would on the Earth. So <laughs> going to the sun probably isn't the best idea because like I said, it's super hot there. But also if you feel 20 times heavier than you do on Earth, that's like getting crushed by a car. And the only reason they feel that is because the sun is so massive and the sun has so much more gravity than the Earth. Let's take a look at Newton's second law equation. Let's take a look at Newton's second law equation. And Newton's second law equation just says net force equals mass times acceleration. 
And that's what that symbol stands for right here. This just means net force. The little M stands for mass and the A stands for acceleration. Because it's a force, it's going to have the units of newtons. Acceleration still has the units of meters per second squared. And mass, we know, has the units of kilogram. Again, just a little diagram on the bottom left showing that the more force an object has, the more it's going to accelerate. There's a video in here as well. I recommend that you go check it out. If you just Google mass versus weight song, it will pop up. It's a pretty good video. It gets stuck in your head. Um, but it definitely helps you distinguish between mass and weight. Now we're going to talk about how we can calculate net force. Well, the first step that we need to do is split up into both our x and y directions. So over here, I'm going to notice that I have a free body diagram. And this free body diagram has some forces pointed up, some forces pointed down, and some forces pointed to the right and to the left. To the right and the left, that's going to be considered the x direction, and up and down is considered the y direction. So out of those four directions though, we're going to consider up and to the right being positive, and then we're going to say down and to the left are negative. So if we wanted to figure out what the net force in the x direction is, we're going to take the sum of the left and the right forces, because those are the only forces that are acting in the x direction. And by the x direction, we just mean the horizontal direction. How am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to add the forces that point to the right and subtract the forces that point to the left. So for this problem, I would have force applied minus force friction because force applied is pointed to the right and force friction is pointed to the left. And that's going to be my net force in the x direction. How do we figure out the net force in the y direction? Well, in the y direction, we're going to take the sum of the up and down forces. And again, we're going to add the forces that are pointing up and subtract the forces that are pointing down. Like we said before, the y direction is just talking about the vertical direction. And what would that look like? Well, the forces pointing up are force normal, so I would have Fn minus the forces pointing down, which is force gravity, and that would be equal to the net force in the y direction. You'll notice that I added a little y here and an x here. That's just so that we know that this equation is talking about the y direction and this equation is talking about the x direction. Let's take a look at an example problem here. You are pushing a 10 kilogram cart at a constant velocity. What is the acceleration in the x and y direction? So this is an interesting problem. We have to notice that they give us the mass here, 10 kilograms, that's referring to the mass. But then we also have to notice that it says a constant velocity. Constant velocity means that there's actually no acceleration. So we already know the answer to this problem, but we're just gonna verify it with Newton's second law real quick. So we'll notice that we have force normal pointed up at 500 newtons, force gravity pointed down at 500 newtons, force applied pointed to the right at 20 newtons, and force friction pointed to the left at 20 newtons. So the net force in the x direction is going to be force applied, which is 20 newtons, minus force friction, which is 20 newtons. I end up with 20 minus 20 equals zero newtons. Again, this is just force applied here, and this is just force friction. Now let's take a look at the y direction. For the y direction, I have force normal, which is 500 newtons, minus force gravity, which is also 500 newtons. So therefore, I end up, again, with zero newtons. What's my mass? Well, we notice in the problem they give us our mass. It's 10 kilograms. How did I know it's 10 kilograms? Because I know mass is measured in kilograms, so that's my hint. Acceleration. Well, now to figure out the acceleration, I'm going to have to use my equation. And my equation was net force equals ma. So if I take this equation and I manipulate it to solve for a, I end up with acceleration is equal to net force in the x direction divided by mass. It's important that we only look at one direction at a time. So I'm going to start with the x direction here. That's why I wrote net force x. I find out that acceleration is equal to 0 divided by 10. 0 divided by anything is just 0. So acceleration in the x direction is 0. Now i got to do the same thing for the y direction. I find out that acceleration in the y direction is also 0 meters per second squared. Let's go ahead and write this answer in a complete sentence so we know what's actually going on here. And I'm going to go ahead and say that the cart isn't accelerating in either direction. And how do I know? Well, my acceleration in the x direction is 0, 
and my acceleration in the y direction is zero. Therefore, the cart is not experiencing acceleration in the x and also not experiencing acceleration in the y. Now let's take a look at problem number two, a very similar problem here, where it says that we are pushing that 10 kilogram cart again. So 10 kilograms is talking about our mass, but this time it says that we are accelerating. So we have to figure out what is that acceleration in the x and y direction. So net force in the x direction, well, we said before that's the forces that point to the right. So in this case, force applied minus the forces that point to the left, in this case, force friction. So I end up with 50 minus 20. That gives me a net force in the x direction of 30 newtons. Now we do the same thing for the y direction, where we have 500 newtons of force normal pointed up minus 500 newtons of force gravity pointed down. We find out that net force in the y direction is equal to zero. What is our mass? Well, again, looking at the problem, we notice kilograms. Kilograms is talking about mass, so we have a mass of 10 kilograms. What's the acceleration? Again, we don't know that, so we're going to have to figure it out. Like we said before, we're going to use our equation, net force equals ma, and we can just go ahead and manipulate this again to solve for a because that's what we're looking for. So we'll divide mass to the other side. We find out that acceleration is equal to net force in the x direction divided by mass. Therefore, acceleration equals 30 divided by 10. Simplifying that, I just get acceleration in the x direction is equal to three meters per second squared. I do the same thing for the y direction now, and I find out that acceleration in the y direction is still zero meters per second squared. Writing this answer in a complete sentence so that we know what it's talking about, we can say that the cart is accelerating to the right at three meters per second squared, and since it's experiencing an acceleration in the y direction of zero, it just means that the cart is not accelerating in the y direction, which makes sense because if the cart was accelerating in the y direction, that would mean that the cart was flying off the ground or it was flying to the center of the earth. Those two things are not happening when we're pushing our cart on the ground, especially when we're at a grocery store. Our cart stays level on that surface. Let's take a look at our last problem here. A 10 kilogram cart is moving to the right and decelerating. So decelerating is just a way of us saying that our cart is slowing down. What is the acceleration in the x direction and the y direction? So again, let's look at the problem. We notice 10 kilograms. 10 kilograms is talking about mass. I notice on my free body diagram now that I only have one force acting in the x direction, and that's friction. So net force in the x direction would be the forces to the right minus the forces to the left. Since there's no forces to the right, I can just say zero minus 20. I end up with negative 20 newtons of net force in the x direction. I take a look at my forces in the y direction. I notice force normal is pointing up and force gravity is pointing down. Therefore, I get 500 newtons minus 500 newtons. That just gives me a net force in the y direction of zero newtons. Mass is still 10 kilograms because I see that in my problem above. Acceleration is still unknown. So if I'm solving for acceleration here, I need to use my equation, like before, net force equals ma. And again, I'll manipulate this by dividing mass over to just solve for acceleration. I find out that for the x direction, my acceleration is equal to negative 2 meters per second squared. And in the y direction, my acceleration is equal to 0 meters per second squared. Writing this answer in a complete sentence, I can say that the cart is accelerating to the left at negative two meters per second squared, which just means that the cart is slowing down at a rate of two meters per second squared. Key takeaways from today's lesson was that as net force increases, our acceleration increases. So as mass increases and force remains the same, acceleration will decrease. This makes sense because like we said earlier, heavier objects are harder to speed up. Another important thing that we notice is that if net force is negative, it's going to mean that our object is slowing down. On the flip side, that would mean that a net force that is positive will speed up an object. And then lastly, just make sure that you are adding the forces that point up and subtracting the forces that point down, as well as adding the forces that point to the right and subtracting the forces that point to the left. Another really important thing that we need to remember is that we have to split up 
those x and y directions. So always remember to write net force in the x and have your force at that point left and right, and then net force in the y and have those forces point up and down.